Hi, I posted this on Facebook yesterday. I was just showing people what I'm working on a Clean Vision board here, and I pulled out all the memory and it had two bad chips, so I just pulled them all out and I socketed it. Then I replaced them with 4164s, which will fit in a 4116 slot with just a slight modification. And a nice thing about it, besides the fact that they're readily available, where the 4116s are hard to come by, they don't require the minus 12 volts or the minus 5 volts which is going to make powering this thing from a USB a lot easier. But somebody asked me, how do I go about getting these off? Because these ColecoVision boards have some very, very bad traces. As you can see, I mean, I actually did have to patch two of them, which is not that hard. So I said, I'll show my trick. My trick involves three tools. Standard basic soldering iron. Five bucks Walmart. This right here is a manual solder sucker. I think I got it for six bucks on Amazon. Works great. I got a electronic one too, but this just this actually works really good. And these little nippers came with my 3D printer, and they work really awesome. I'm gonna show you how to get these things off now. I went in my box and I pulled out an old Atom game board that I had to fix. You can see it's got some messed up memory here from a few years ago when I was going to fix it and I said never mind because at the time I really wasn't good at soldering three or four years ago. I had just started doing things like that. So I'm going to go back and fix this. But I want to show you how to get a chip out of here cleanly. Oh and you need one other thing. I use this monster heavy clamp but you need some way of holding this thing steady and standing up on the side. So let me just show you what we're doing first. It's, it's very simple. Take your little nippers here. And if my head gets in the way, I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. So just get up in here, you want up at the top, see you got the legs right here, you want right at the top of the leg, it's going to be hard to show you this, but I want to go right at the top of the leg, work with my outside, and I want to leave as much of the leg on there as possible. So I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to have to do it without worrying about if the camera can see or not. I'm going to take this at the top of the leg and snip, go to the next one, snip, Go to the next one, snip. So I'm working down one side completely. I've done this with a Dremel too, and it does work, but it is messy. Very, very messy. And very dangerous, and uh, you can cut up the traces. But this right here works very easy. You snip off these, because we're, we're replacing this anyways. This is a bad chip. Well, theoretically, it's a bad chip. So let's get it out of here. Now, you could use a electronic solder sucker. See? That's out of the way. Bad chip gone. Left the legs there. You can use this manual solder sucker and go back here and try to suck these out. But what happens is you end up ripping these traces if you're not careful. And it, it is it is kind of hard to get them all out. This trick works really good. So now I'm going to take my monster clampy thing and I want to just hold this thing up in the air so I can work on it. Uh, which way do I want to go? Like this would be better. Now, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but you're going to see what I'm doing, and then I'll show you what I'm doing afterwards. But what I am doing is, see how, I, see how these legs stand out here? I'm going to keep my nippers here. And I'm going to look at these and know exactly which ones I need to do on the back here. You don't want to warm up the wrong one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my soldering iron. I'm going to a little brass brush. brass brush. Take my brass brush, just clean off the end. Clean up the little bit of carbon does help it a little. And then I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm going to go to the first one I'm working on right here. I'm going to put my soldering iron on the pin to warm up the solder. I'm going to take my glasses off. I see better without my glasses on. It's close work like this. Warm up the solder. Now this is a little harder if they bent the pins putting them in. But if they didn't bend the pins putting them in, you just warm up the solder. Until, come on. I got my nippers hanging on the other side. I'm not squeezing enough to cut it. I just want to hang on them using it as pliers. I think my soldering iron is hot enough yet. There we go. You want the solder and just pull the little pin up. And I'm going to do the next one. I'll do a few of these just so you can see. Well, actually, I can do them all because it's pretty quick once you get going. There's one. I'm just placing this on the back there to warm up the solder. 
once the pin's starting to move, yank it out. Don't yank it out when the pin's not moving. Yank it out when the pin's not moving, you can rip a trace off. But that's not the end of the world, as you saw on the other board there, and I'll show you how that works. I got a pollen alert. Guess I'm gonna have to start taking my medication again. See, this is a lot easier because I'm not sucking any of the solder out yet. You'll see that I will do that, but I'm gonna just keep doing this. Get all these out. Come on. Almost got that side done. There's three left on that side. Don't yank them out. Do not twist and pull them out unless they're really loose. You, you don't want to pull. You don't want to rip nothing apart. Okay. Come on. This one's the ground one, so there's a lot of solder in the way, so I really got to get a good press against it. Almost. Almost. This is the hardest one. This is the one that's hooked up to the ground plane so there's a lot of solder to absorb all the heat from the tip of the soldering iron. Let me see if I can go sideways on to get a better connection. There we go. Got it out. All right. So I did one line down. I'm going to do the other line too because I just want to show you how to completely clean when you're done. Now each one of these has 16 pins on it. So yesterday I did 8 of them, so I did 128 pins I had to do like this. So it takes a while, but it's a clean way of doing it. Now obviously you don't have to use a giant C-clamp like I'm using and you don't have to Use the nippers. If you got professional tools, use them. It's a technique more than anything that I'm demoing right now on how to get these apart. Now I did notice on the ColecoVision board that I worked on, the pins for the memory had been bent over. I think they do that prior to soldering just to make it so they don't fall out. So those you may have to maneuver a little to get them out. Now I got all the pins out so I'm done with this. I'm not done with the soldering iron yet. What I'm going to do now is, I'm going to take my little solder sucker. See how you push that in? Push the button. It sucks the solder out of that tip right there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to work my way up one side and work my way up the other. I'm putting this in the hole where the pin was, just to warm up all the solder there. Then I'm going to come on this side and suck all the solder out. And once I see I got daylight there, I go to the next one. And I keep work my way up each side. I had some stuff on the table yesterday to stop this clamp from sliding around. We made it a little easier than it is right now. But I with the person next that I explained to him how and I, I was going to just type it up but in Facebook. Trying to type something up like that is like useless. So I figured, you know what, I better just take the time and write it up. Where am I at? <laughs> Sorry for the snipples. I do believe that's the pollen kicking in. I'm going to have to go back on my allergy medication for a while. When I get done, I'll show you all the 
holes and how clean they are and you can see how this method really works well. Okay, one side done, one other side. Now what I'm doing with the soldering iron is I'm just placing it in the hole. I'm not trying to drill it out or anything. I'm just placing the hole so it heats up all the solder. This one ground plane is going to be difficult. I can see that right now. Got it. I just had to hold it there longer to warm it up more. When you're doing this, when you put the soldering iron up against the hole in this side, on the other side you can see the solder bubble out. Oops. And that gives you an idea where to get it from. So you know which one to suck on. And if you count them too, if you just go in a step-by-step -step order, you can keep track of where you're at. And you can get them all done. Almost done with this one. <laughs> My soldering iron is starting to build up some carbon on it. It's taking longer to heat up. But I'm almost done with this. Then I'll go back to working on that other board that I was working on yesterday. I'm doing a number of things to that one. One more pinhole. Mm, a little bit more on that one. All right. Now, I'm going to put my eyes back on so I can see where I'm going. I'm going to grab my toothbrush and my isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just going to spray the back of it here. Brush it off just to get anything loose that might be on there still and spray the front too. Brush it off. Get up any build up on there. And let me show you what we got. See all the pins there that I pulled out. See how they come out nice and clean and easy. And this is what we have. See, it's nice and clean. Not a single trace has been broken anywhere there. All the holes are good. Same on this side. Now I could just drop a socket in there. Just like... So, the reason why I would use a socket instead of just throwing a chip back in there is if you put a chip in there and that chip ends up being bad, well, now you got to go through this whole process again. You put a socket in there, you don't have to ever unsolder this thing again. So I could take a socket and I could just set a socket right in here. Line up the legs, the legs are going too little. Occasionally, when you're trying to put sockets in, you might get one hole that needs to be warmed up. It's got a little bit of solder still in it that didn't want to come out. But like you see, what I would do in this case here is most of them are in. There's one hole that's not going in. On this side, I can see it right there, that hole. Actually, let me just see if I can get that one cleaned out one more time. That's the third one down. Let's just see what I can do here. Can I do it without using the... No, hang on. I want to clean that third hole out. What I was going to say is you can take your soldering iron and warm that hole up while you're pushing in the socket and make it get in there. But I'm going to just do this now because I'm not actually working on this board right now. So I don't want to leave a socket just hanging in there. So let's get in here. Yeah, it goes. There, I got it out there. Now the socket should go right in, no problem. There's a little lip of solder, maybe it, maybe it like seeped over after I was done and it, it cooled off and closed the hole up. But now if I just take the socket, it should be able to just drop it right in the hole. Yeah, okay. See, socket's in the hole, solder in place, done. No trace is broken. Now, just so you know, if, you broke a trace. Let's say I replaced all eight of these, like I did with the other one. And I, when I'm done, I want to test to make sure they all work. Remember, every one of these chips is exactly the same. So without it being powered up or anything, you get a continuity. 
meter or any, even even a multimeter with continuity on it. And if you just take your continuity meter and you just go from I'm gonna go from like over here. You go from say I'm on well even here maybe I can get it. This pin here, this pin here should connect to that pin. It's doing it without being soldered. It's not soldered in so the connection's not good. But when you do it, you, this pin here, you should be able to test that one, test that one, test that one, and every one the exact same pin. If they don't connect, you got broken continuity, and you do for all 16 of them. And any of them that you don't have don't have continuity on, like I didn't on this board right here, I had two pins that didn't work out. I just jumpered the pin to the next one over, the pin to the next one over. Now you don't want to do this with a data pin, so watch your, look at your printout. Look at your printout, you don't want to do this with, da, uh, da, 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 where is it, where is the 4116, which one is it, which, here we go. You don't want to do it with data in and data out. So the pin, those two pins right there, you don't want to do them because they are different. So those you may have to chase down, just try to get lucky and you don't have to worry about that one, but every other pin, all the address lines are going to be exactly the same on every one of them. All the right lines, all the casts, all the voltage, all of them are going to be the same. So you can jumper as needed if you break a trace. Or if you broke, if you don't want to do that, if you did, or if you did do data in or data out, you could chase down where it's at. Like say it was, uh, it's hard to see in here, but just say for instance that trace got broken. Well, just follow it back to see where the trace goes back here somewhere and just jumper from it. To there. You're just going to fix that. If you can't fix the trace itself, just avoid the trace and go to where the trace goes. Don't go past it. I mean, if it goes up into something and back out, you don't want to go past it. You want to just go from it to where the trace goes. But that's it. It's not hard to do. Pull the chip out. If you just take your time, you can pull the chip out. You can cleanly put another one back in there and works perfect. Have a good day.